hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of the Ripple Effect podcast. We are so glad that you have joined us, whether you're listening to this on the go or watching this online, we are glad that you are here with us. As always, this podcast is a behind the scenes look at things going on at Timberlake Christian Church, gives you a chance at catching up with what's happening and what's going to come up here in the near future, and also gives us a chance to spotlight some ministries and people in the church that we feel like you need to know about. We're in the studios today, and uh, on my left is Mary Green, and on my right is Mr. Brian Sevitz. The OGs, if you will, Mm -hmm. are with us in the studio, and we're glad that they're here. Before we get to the uh, scheduled uh, topics that we got to talk about, we first want to give you the sponsor of the week. And the sponsor of the week is... Dum Dums. (laughs) Well, yeah, really. It could be any candy. It's candy all around. Um, I have been tempted this week, very much so. Don't do it. Yesterday, I was by myself for a little bit, and I was hungry. And in our hallway, there's a lot of candy. And I looked at it, and I was like, "Ooh, the spirit is willing, it looks but like the flesh a lot is weak." Candy, but in actuality, it's about one eighth of the candy that we need. It is uh, October 31st is uh, Halloween, and. We made the decision a few years ago to do a trunk or treat, to provide a safe environment for families in our community to bring their children, to bring their friends, and to walk through the uh, different vehicles and see different costumes, have some hot dogs, creating a safe environment for our community to do uh, some trick or treating. And one of the things we realized very quickly is we didn't have enough candy. Uh Do you remember that first? Oh yeah. Did you go out? I think there were two trips to the store Mad that dashes. first one to yeah. get extra candy. Yeah. Mad dashes. So we decided that we were going to ask the congregation to help us by um, volunteering to go get some candy, donating some candy, and that's what we've been doing. So if you wanted to participate in that, we're still collecting candy. You can bring it by the office anytime. Maybe we'll talk about that later. But there is our sponsor of the week, some good old-fashioned candy. And I should say... I did not eat the candy. <laughs> well, you know, I always have that one bin you can go. I do, I do. That's the candy I ate. That's the candy I ate. Well, we're glad that you're with us here today. Uh, first, we like to start out with the TLCC top three of the week, the things that you need to know coming up that everybody should be aware of. We've talked about them, but this just give us another chance to uh, let you know about what's happening. So, Brian, give us the top TLCC top three for this week. Okay, number one is the second Saturday men's group. That's this week. Uh, Daniel's in charge. I'm going to be gone again. I was saying I was one of the main people that said we really need to get this off the ground. Uh And so this will be the third one in a row. I've been out of town. So we'll put it into your file. It's all right. Yeah. So it's going to be here at the church. We're trying to alternate between the church building and then somewhere out in the community. Mm -hmm. So this month it's here at the church, 730. Yep. And so all guys are invited to that. The second uh, announcement or thing you need to know is, once again, the estate planning seminar. This is the last week you'll hear about that. We'll talk about it anymore. Uh, But we've had a ton of people sign up last minute. It's been great. Uh, I think we're up to maybe close to 50 people now between the two time slots. Mm -hmm. So you can still go online, click on events, sign up. Uh, especially if you're coming to the lunch one, we need to know because Dawn is getting some food prepared. No cost to you, and it, they'll help you get your paperwork in order for your estate plan. The seminar is kind of a primer, and this is something that Kelly got into a little bit on Sunday if you were here for his announcement. You have to have a, a meeting, obviously, longer meeting to actually get your estate plan made. Yeah. You can't do that in an hour. Mm-hmm. Especially uh, now with a room full of people. Yeah. Yeah, but going the, through all your details. <laughs> yeah. The specifics. If it's like it used to be, which has been several years since we I did that, but they give you a booklet. The, the seminar kind of explains the basics of it. You go home and fill out this booklet, and then you schedule a time mm-hmm. to get one-on-one with somebody to get it done. Yeah. So that's coming up. And then... The last one's kind of cheating on the top three because I just put volunteers needed. <laughs> and here's the thing. We just talked about trunk or treat. Yep. Th- these are going to be talked about Sunday as well, but there's some... We always need volunteers in Mary's area, so I'm skipping that. Uh, but she can I'm make, not skipping she that. I could use plug. some right uh, This is like constant, though, for Mary needing new people in her rotation. 
Uh, trunk or treat obviously is a volunteer opportunity, not just for decorating your trunk, trunk or bringing candy, but greeters. Daniel's been lighting up greeters and the hot dog stand. Mm -hmm. I think I think concessions is fully staffed. Okay, so we're good on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's trunk or treat. That's one volunteer, and that's just a one-time deal. The other three I have on my list today are being on a rotation. The first one of those is the coffee bar. Like for November, they only have two volunteers, I think. Mm. So they're needing more people in. We've had some people move away, some people who uh, their job has taken them away for weekends. And so uh, most of us enjoy having the coffee bar, either for coffee, tea, hot chocolate, mm -hmm. um, whatever. So maybe you can volunteer for that. Maybe you've not served here at Timberlake. And this is a great first place to serve. And uh, she said, no experience needed. She can teach you. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be able to be here at eight. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Because the the big pots take about an hour yeah. to get hot. So, yeah, you do need to be here early. The second one of those rotations is chair setup. And that happens on Saturday evenings. And Tracy Roach has organized that for years. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate that. He's done it, honestly, himself or with his family many times. But it's a lot easier uh, if you have a team mm -hmm. and so if you're willing to be on that team for all these things just contact the office even even comment on mm -hmm. on the video or wherever you're watching or listening and and we can put you in touch with the right person you can also um, volunteer for something new which is chair teardown and I don't know if everybody's noticed but <laughs> last several weeks we have not torn down the chairs immediately after and we've not asked for people to do it and there's a couple reasons for this uh, number one and the primary reason is right after service we want it to be an environment where people can talk especially if there's some new people that want to be introduced to some other uh, people and if you're engaging in a conversation we've had it in the past where you're talking with someone and there's people around you <laughs> grabbing mm -hmm. chairs and kind of moving you around um, so we wanted to create a better environment for fellowship and for being with one another. Um, and that means somebody else has to come in and help tear down the chairs, mm -hmm. either 20, 30 minutes after service or the next day. And so we'd really like to develop a group of people who can do just the chair setup and then a group of people who would be willing to help with the chair tear down. Mm -hmm. So that's something new. The staff have done it uh, several days. Levi Black has just come in here and and started doing that we mm -hmm. hear him and the staff go pitch in mm -hmm. uh my son is in the sunday night middle school boys group <laughs> they've gotten in on that three times now this past week it was their job yeah. and i really appreciate that and they they're like we'll do that once a month but we need some people mm -hmm. to step up because the staff don't want to do it every week That's the middle right. school boys don't want to do it every week so we all just going to kind of share that a little bit yeah. and and that might be something where you're like yeah i could go out to lunch sunday and come back and it doesn't honestly stacking the chairs is way faster than setting up the chairs it, it takes it about 15 minutes if you have a few people yeah. and it's done so not a huge job but i really think it does improve the experience not just for guests i think about this big time in terms of guests mm -hmm. but just for our fellowship after the service yeah it's just a better environment yeah. in there when we're not stacking chairs I so agree. those are the top three there you go tlcc top three uh if you're interested in volunteering there's lots of areas and some new areas that we're trying to get involved in uh if you want to do the estate planning it's last time you're going to hear about it sign up call the office today and then we have the men's breakfast which is happening this saturday at 7 30 a.m at the church building. yeah and i might say as far as these volunteer things you can always go to tlcc.church serve or in the menu just click on serve um now when we're doing serve day that website changes a little bit because mm -hmm. we have all the projects yeah but all year long that that page is open and it's just a form for you to tell us you want to serve and you can check box one of those areas chair set up Mary's kids area, worship ministry, whatever. If you're interested in serving somewhere, fill that out and it comes to us and then we'll contact you to get you plugged in. Or if you are someone that another person has come to and said, I'd really like to serve, but I don't know what, and you're not sure what to tell them, say, go to the website, yeah. tlcc.church slash serve. Or you just right fill there. their name out and then 
Okay. Okay. There you go. TLCC top three. What we didn't do, and I skipped over, is just a review of this past Sunday. So we're kind of doing it a little out of order. But Mary, how was your Sunday? What did you do this week? Uh, can you remember that far back of all that has happened already? Um, how was your Sunday? It was a little confusing because, honestly, I I thought that Brian was coming in to help us work on stuff for the 29th. Oh, the songs. So I told the kids, you know, when Brian comes, <laughs> stop whatever we're doing, and he's going to be in charge. And then they kept going, when's Brian coming? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but we've been talking about the king's. And the divided kingdom and good kings, bad kings, and how there were overwhelmingly more bad kings in Israel and mm-hmm. Judah than there were good kings. Good. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, are there any latest stories that you need to share that are, you know, troubled kids, uh, funny kids, <laughs> uh, difficult kids, kids out in the hallway? Has, has it been that kind of season or has it been okay? We don't get to the hallway very often. Good. You are a ninja with your skills of like. I helping. well, I have a personal philosophy about that. I feel like I communicate the expectations and the consequences, and if they have to have a consequence, it's dealt with then and there. Mm-hmm. It's not something that I tell parents unless it's an ongoing, mm-hmm. unresolved issue. So, mm-hmm. I I don't feel like telling. On parents on their kids is fair if they if they were informed of the consequence and they dealt the consequence then it should be done. Yeah, it's done. Hmm. So only if only if your child week after week after week <laughs> had the same issue would yeah. I say something to yeah. you. All right, that was a very diplomatic way of saying I'm not telling you if there's issues <laughs> in, in service. Um, this this Sunday uh, we are still in our Israel leaving. Uh, Egypt heading to the promised land uh, as wanderers and how they were turned into and helped uh, God taught them how to worship him through that wandering. Uh, Brian, how was a Sunday for you? This was a Sunday where you guys practiced early yeah. Sunday morning. So it ended up going fine, uh-huh. but that's always one of those really early mornings and uh, it was women of joy. Yeah. So you had I had the boys. the boys, so they had to get up early uh-huh. and be here and have breakfast here. And uh-huh. Anyway, it, it ended up going fine, but um, I'm always just hoping, like, because I'm not a morning person, as I said last week, mm-hmm. I'm hoping my thoughts are coherent and everything. But then afterwards, on a week like that, I always have some people that were like, oh, that was like my favorite Sunday in a long time. <laughs> You're like, oh, uh, okay. okay. <laughs> I am really happy about that. But... Another thing about it is it's fresh on our mind. So even though we don't like getting here that early and Mm -hmm. doing our warm up and everything, we've just practiced. So that's good. Um, There is some construction going on on the stage. Yeah, Uh, we uh, you you've done something pretty extreme. Do you want to talk about it at all? Sure. (laughs) (laughs) You could say well, we've had a lot of we've had ideas for a long time. Partly about this space we're sitting in now. We've talked about this for two years, Mm -hmm. Um, and we're sitting in what used to be the baptistry changing room. We noticed most people didn't ever use this for that, and it was just a junk closet because they just go change in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Um, So we knocked the walls out and everything and made this a little studio, and I call it band holding area. the green room Uh, yeah green room that's a better term but then you know we have a drum surround plexiglass shield like a lot of places but our drummers still have to hold back and everybody knows sometimes we have a drummer who is amazing but they can't hold back Mm -hmm. and i won't mention his name but i don't know maybe he's watching it but we've (laughs) talked about it it's like they they just are Mm -hmm. really talented but really good drummers often uh, play loud yeah. uh, and and so we're building in a room we've bought a drum room a booth mm-hmm. basically like you'd have in a re- recording studio almost but it was so big I didn't just want to sit it out on the stage because our stage isn't that big yeah. yeah and so we we chopped a big hole in the wall Rex Black as one of his final projects here mm-hmm. before he moves and by the way he's moving and we hope to um, tell you all about that soon. Okay. But Rex, uh, it has helped with that project this week. And so it'll be kind of an inset, recessed room that I think will make the stage still be balanced. 
So no more free range drummers. They're going to be caged. And hopefully the goal is that it would not only help balance the sound, but also um, uh, provide a little bit more freedom for drummers. And mm -hmm. overall, the desire is obviously that the not only the quality of sound would improve, but also just the atmosphere of the room as well that we yeah. can continue uh, to keep that. So ideally energy. in sound, you can control everything and... This will allow us to do that. Mm -hmm. Then it's up to the sound guys, you who are watching. Your job even gets more important it now. Does get but the live stream should improve too. Yeah, absolutely. Because of this change. So yeah. I think it'll be good. Yeah, a lot of different moving parts. Uh, this past Sunday, we talked about the instructions that God gave his people and how he gives them for a reason uh, to shape them into the people he wanted them to be. And we talked about the Ten Commandments. We talked about uh, instructions for worship. And then we talked about some instructions for our social responsibilities. And there's some difficult passages. I found it really hard to try to boil down that large chunk of scripture because you could spend a lot of time on those individually. But we at least scratched the surface. And if you want to see more or hear more, you can go to tlcc.church. You can catch up on the sermon and then uh, follow up with me if you have more questions or even discussions. Uh, you can read some of the discussion questions that are listed there in the description of the video. So it was a good Sunday and I hope that it was encouraging for you. It was one of those uh, days that it felt like everybody had something to do but sometimes that happens. So mm -hmm. anyway, you can catch up at tlcc.church uh, if you missed any of that. Okay, we have a surprise for you. And the surprise is, there is no surprise. We're going to mm -hmm. end the video early. Uh, it's just been a busy week, everybody getting back into the groove of things. And we didn't really have a specific highlight of the week. So we're going to leave you a little early with a blessing of the week out of the book of First Peter. Uh, I think with the... Um, the, the things that have been happening in our world, particularly the uh, attacks and the, the war that's going on in Israel right now, and some of the strife and the uh, worry that has come out of that, has drawn me to this passage. It comes out of 1 Peter chapter 1. And I was just thinking about uh, salvation and the idea of being rescued, the idea of um, God coming in and saving the day and what that means and what that looks like. And so 1 Peter... Uh, the Apostle has some encouraging words for Christians that are going through difficult times. And for us here in Moberly and the surrounding towns, our difficult time is more anxiousness and worry about what could happen. Uh, you know, food is a, costs a lot of money and gas costs a lot of money, but we still have safety and security. We still have freedom. We still have the ability to live and move and do what we want to do. Uh, but in other places in the world, that's not necessarily true. And so how do we think about God rescuing and redeeming and saving uh, in difficult times? So here's what Peter says. It says, Blessed be the God and our Father, uh, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. So whatever God promises you cannot be taken away by any man-made object or thing. This inheritance that has been provided for us is guaranteed for those who cling to Jesus. Verse 5, for by God's power, or you, you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. That's what we rejoice in. In the salvation that Jesus brought that is, we find and discover through faith, that's what we rejoice in. Not necessarily in good seasons, not necessarily in being the most powerful, not necessarily in the promise that we'll never have to endure any sort of pain because that's never given to us. We rejoice and we have hope in the salvation Jesus gives. For though now for a little while you may gr be grieved by various trials, but, but still hang on to joy because the, the tested genuineness of your faith which is more precious than gold, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Even though you haven't seen him, you love him. Even though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with the joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Obtaining the outcome of your faith, and the outcome of our faith is not, again, 
social security, it's not the outcome of our faith is not relational security, it's not national security. The outcome of our faith is the salvation of your soul. And so in times of uncertainty and unrest, people want to cling to so many different things and so many different theories and so many different things that might give them hope. But at the end of the day, we cling to our faith in Jesus because that's where true salvation lies. So be encouraged and know that Jesus is enough. We love you all. We hope that you have a great rest of the week and we can't wait to see you here again next week at the Ripple Effect Podcast.